Hi, my name is David Bismarck and uh, I gave a TED talk on verifiable electronic voting which recently came out on TED.com. In the comments underneath my video there were lots of questions about keys which is quite understandable because we use cryptography. Uh, and so the question is, in this encrypted voting system, who has the key? Who can decrypt the votes and theoretically having this key change the votes without anyone noticing? Great question, because that is exactly the problem we want to solve. So what I don't have time to talk about in my six minute TED talk is about what happens behind the scenes, so to speak, that the voters don't see. Uh, what we do is we split the trust up. So traditionally, or if there was a single organization running this electronic voting system, uh, we would have a single organization that knows all the secrets. So they would know the secret key, they could potentially decrypt all the votes and find out how you voted, or they could change the outcome of the election. And we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So uh, we find lots of different trusted parties. And the trusted parties uh, have to be chosen in such a way that they are unlikely all to work together to change the outcome of the election, to break the election, I used to say, or to uh, find out how you voted, i.e. break secrecy. So we might choose that all the political parties in the country, uh, plus uh, the current government, plus the opposition, plus the United Nations, the European Union, the US government, uh, governments of countries in the region, interested organizations such as uh, international uh, election observers and so forth, might be trusted parties. And so we, we choose as many as we feel we need to um, keep the election secret. And we split the trust up among these. And I'm going to try to explain how that is done using these keys. So I'm coming back to keys now. Uh, to start off with, we use what's called public key cryptography, and that means there are two keys. One uh, public key and one secret key. And if I have such a key pair, and, uh, and you know my public key, because I've published it, I've given it to everyone, it's not a secret, it's a public key. Uh, if you want to send me a secret message that I'm the only one who should be, be able to read, you encrypt it under my public key knowing that I have to use the secret key to decrypt it. So a public key can, you, if you encrypt something under the public key, you can't decrypt it using that public key, but you can decrypt it using the secret key. And that's public key cryptography. So if we encrypt all the votes under this public key, uh, you can only use the secret key to decrypt them. So everyone knows this public key. Uh, but we don't want any one organization to know this secret key. So we actually split it up. And we don't just do this. I mean, it, there's not one organization which makes the key and splits it up and gives it to these various trusted parties. Instead, the trusted parties execute a protocol, as it's called, to each create key shares such that the key shares make up this uh, master secret key. So that this master secret key doesn't actually exist. No one knows it. It's hidden. Only if you uh, put all of these key shares together will they make up the secret key so that you can decrypt the encrypted votes. So we, get, we make sure that the, the Various trusted parties are not likely to work together, but they all have a key share. Uh, and if at least one of them is honest and doesn't want to work with all the others to break the election, then the election is uh, secret. Uh, um, yes, and so what we do is we take all these encrypted votes that I, that I showed in the TED talk and we, uh, we mix them somehow. I'm not going to go into the mixing now because that's, it'll take a while. But we put all the encrypted votes in, in a mix, and then they are thoroughly mixed. And when they come back out, we don't know which uh, encrypted vote belongs to which voter, in essence. There's more to it than this, but I, 
I'll leave it at this. And when the, these trusted parties, so this might be different political, political parties, uh, in, in national observers, the government, the opposition and so forth, people who are not likely to work together, when they are happy that the votes are thoroughly mixed, so no one knows how, uh, which vote belongs to which voter, they do the decryption. And we take all the encrypted votes and we pass them to the first trusted party and it does its part of the decryption. And then they are passed along to the next one and they do their parts of the encryption, uh, decryption. Sorry. And that means when the um, encrypted votes have passed all of the trusted parties or a threshold, this is just a footnote, but a threshold set of, of these uh, trusted parties, out pops plain text countable votes. So these are votes that anyone can read because they are in plain text and anyone can count them. Uh, and the reason we know that the decryption is done correctly, so no one has tried to cheat, is that we can use the public key to do a verification of all this work. So in short, we can verify that the mix has been done correctly. We can verify that these people, uh, all these various trusted parties, have decrypted the votes correctly using the public key. We don't need to know the secret key to do the verification. Um, so, uh, so we encrypt the votes under a public key, but we can't decrypt using that key. We have to decrypt under a secret key, but no one knows this uh, secret key. It is known by, by a large number of people working together. And if at least one of them, or at, at least some of those, aren't likely to work with the others to break the election, then the election is kept secret. So the key to verifiable electronic voting is to share the trust out among many different organizations. So there is no single person or organization who has the key to the election.